Let's learn about consistency. In statistics, a consistent estimator converges to the true value of the parameter it is trying to estimate. So let's try to understand this on a deeper level. What does consistent mean? Well, in normal English, let's ask Google. Consistent, acting or done in the same way over time, especially as to be fair or accurate. Well, that sounds maybe like something good for a statistical estimator to uh, have. Um, unchanging in nature, standard, or effect over time. Uh, consistent. Okay, this is a definition that we're used to. And we might try to think of statistical consistency in this way. However, consistent estimators are not really consistent in this way at all. Consistency is an asymptotic property, meaning it only applies to sample sizes approaching infinity. So instead, let's move towards an understanding of consistency as following these definitions. Compatible or in agreement with something, or not containing any logical contradictions. A consistent estimator is logically consistent in a very important way. Ronald Fisher introduced the term consistency in his 1922 paper, and he said a statistic satisfies the criterion of consistency if, when it is calculated from the whole population, it is equal to the required parameter. So this is something that is required for an estimator to be logically consistent. If we have the entire population, we should be able to estimate the quantity perfectly. So let's see an example of this. Suppose I want to estimate the average height mu in a small town of 1,000 people. Well, X bar, the sample mean, is an estimator of mu, and it can do a good job of estimating mu if we had a small sample of 20 or 50 or 100 people. But if I measured all 1,000 people and calculate the sample average X bar, it will be exactly equal to the true average height mu. In other words, X bar is a Fisher consistent estimate of mu, because if I calculate the sample average on the whole population, it will be equal to the true average height. So this is Fisher consistency. But let's reimagine consistency, because it's more common in modern statistics to imagine our populations as infinitely large, and to study the behavior of an estimator as the sample size increases as n approaches infinity. Thus, we can never really have the whole population as in Fisher consistency. So an asymptotically consistent estimator approaches the true value as the sample size gets larger. So we say an estimator, theta hat, is consistent for theta, or for estimating theta, if theta hat approaches theta, or converges to theta, as n approaches infinity. Now, what we mean by approaches here is either convergence in probability, which we call weak consistency, or almost sure convergence, which we call strong consistency. So we'll talk briefly here about convergence and probability so we know what that means. But regardless of the precise definition, it means that the estimator, theta hat, will get really, really close to the true value theta with a very high probability when the sample size gets very large. So weak consistency, is often much easier to prove because we can use simple inequalities like Chebyshev's inequality. And weak consistency or convergence and probability just means that the probability that the estimator will be close to the true value, right? That theta hat minus theta is very small, gets very close to one. Okay, so the probability that the estimator will be close to the true value gets very close to one as the sample size gets larger. So consistency is a nice property for an estimator to have, and it is often thought of alongside another nice property, unbiasedness. An unbiased estimator is correct on average for any sample size, and a consistent estimator tends towards being correct as the sample size grows to infinity. So let's understand some connections and distinctions more with some examples. Estimators can be unbiased and consistent. And most unbiased estimators are consistent. Most estimators, like X bar, have standard error that decreases as n gets larger. Right, so in statistics, we have a lot of formulas where we divide by the square root of n. Okay, so the standard deviation of our estimator, theta hat, is equal to some standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, 
right? This denominator is going to get bigger, and that means this standard error is going to get closer to zero as n goes to infinity. And because our estimator was unbiased, it's centered at the true value, and it's getting narrower and narrower. So it concentrates around that value as the sample size gets larger. And that means it's consistent. So let's try to visualize this. Okay, let's say we have an unbiased estimator of our parameter, which in this case is zero. And we're trying to estimate that parameter, right? We have an unbiased estimator that's centered around zero. And we can see that as the sample size gets bigger, we're getting a distribution that becomes more and more concentrated around that value. And the probability of being very close to zero is getting closer and closer to one. Now, biased estimators, which might not be ideal, can also be consistent. So suppose we have a sample uh, x1 through xn from a uniform distribution on the interval from zero to theta, right? So the sample maximum, the maximum data value is the maximum likelihood estimator of theta. However, it's biased, okay? The maximum is always going to be less than theta. It has to be less than theta. So it's always below theta because, uh, and that makes it biased. However, as the sample size grows, the maximum will get closer and closer to theta, right? So we're going to have a whole bunch of values spread out between zero and theta. And as we get more and more of those values, they're going to fill out that whole distribution and they're going to get really, really close to theta when we take the maximum. Okay. So the maximum is a consistent estimator because it's going to get closer to theta as our n gets large. So the MLE is not unbiased, but it is consistent. Uh, and actually, given some very mild restrictions, uh, the MLE is uh, always consistent. Uh, here's another example, uh, the sample variance, right? So when we calculate the sample variance, we usually calculate it as one over N minus one, right? And uh, you might talk in an intro stats class of why we use this N minus one instead of just N. Um, and we use it because that makes this an unbiased estimator. Okay, so this is an unbiased estimator of sigma squared, and it's also consistent because the variance is going to get smaller, the variance of the sample variance uh, is going to get smaller as n gets larger, right? So as n gets larger, s squared is going to do a better job of estimating sigma squared. It's consistent. Now, what if we didn't use this unbiased estimator? What if we just estimated sigma squared um, by using 1 over n? Okay, now this is not going to be an unbiased estimator of sigma squared, but it is consistent, right? Because what is really the difference between sigma hat squared and s squared? It's only the difference between 1 over n minus 1 and 1 over n. But when n is really big, these two numbers are basically the same. So they're going to approach each other, and we know s squared approaches sigma squared, so sigma hat squared is going to also approach sigma squared too. This is consistent even though it's biased, right? As n approaches infinity, sigma hat squared is basically the same as s squared. Now in weird cases, we can get unbiased estimators that are not consistent. Now if an estimator is unbiased and it converges to something, then it will be consistent, right? If it converges to something that's unbiased, it must converge to the correct value. But some bad estimators don't converge to anything. So let's suppose we have a random sample from a normal distribution with unknown mean mu. Now, usually we would want to estimate mu with something like the sample mean, which is consistent. But let's say we just estimated it with the second observation, or any observation, right? It could be the last observation, it doesn't really matter. The second observation is an unbiased estimator of mu too, but it's not a very good one because it doesn't use all of the data. So since we just use one observation, regardless of the sample size, this is always just going to have variance one, right? It's not going to be one over uh, n. It's going to just be one. So it's not going to converge to anything. And thus, it's not going to be consistent, but it will be unbiased. So consistent estimators get very close to the true value as the sample size gets larger. Unbiased estimators are often consistent, but unbiased estimators can be not consistent too. And consistent estimators can definitely be biased. Like the MLE. The MLE is often biased, but it is consistent. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.